Something that I like about Fire Emblem is the absolute embarrassment of characters many of the games provide. Sometimes this results in the units being somewhat one no or not providing much to the story on a larger level outside of their joining chapter, but that aspect is at least somewhat mitigated by the inclusion of the support system, which allows characters to have development divorced from the plot. And this large cast is basically mandatory as a failsafe for players due to the permadeath system. If this were a perfect world, the cast of 30 or so playable characters would all get their moments in the plot, but the games just aren't built for that. My favorite aspect to these large casts, though, is that everyone who plays these games seem to have their own favorites. Sure, you've got your usual suspects, like the Lords or the clearly powerful gameplay characters like Seth, but story relevance or combat prowess isn't necessary to be liked by fans. Sometimes people might like a character because they lack those things, or maybe they like their design, their support conversations, etc. We all have favorite characters, and I want to talk about one of my favorite characters in Fire Emblem and why I like them so much. Fire Emblem The Binding Blade was the first of the Game Boy Advance trilogy of games and features a large cast of characters. It's a somewhat contentious entry in the series, but I'm not interested in discussing its quality. You can check out Professor Bopper's fan ranking video if you want that. Oh, yeah. It's a terrible fucking character. <laughs> Instead, let's jump all the way to chapter 23. This chapter is only accessible to players who went out of their way to complete the eight optional Gaiden chapters encountered throughout the game. And in this village to the right is the home of the final recruitable unit in the game, Corel, the Sword Saint. My favorite character in the game, and one of my favorite characters in all of Fire Emblem. Corel as a character and as a unit fascinates me. To help you understand why, I'll need to explain everything from his abilities, relations to other units, and role in Roy's army. First off, he's the final recruitable unit in the game, seen in the penultimate chapter. In addition, many first-time players will never even meet Corel. Due to being recruitable on a chapter only accessible through, frankly, ludicrous requirements. He also can't be recruited by Roy, which in and of itself isn't unique, there's plenty of characters in the Binding Blade that require other characters to speak to a unit to have them join the army, but what makes Corel different is that he's recruited by visiting this unassuming village. Usually there's some sort of way to check on the overworld if a member of your army can talk to the recruitable unit in question, but if the wrong person enters the village, Corel will turn them away and he won't join the army. That isn't to say that it's a complete shot in the dark when it comes to figuring out how to recruit him, as there's a little cutscene from the perspective of the village that gives the player a primer on Corel, and hints on which units can visit the village and convince Corel to join the cause. He ponders on the health of his sister, Carla, and how her husband and daughter are faring these days. The only father-daughter pair in your army is Bartre and Fear, so with a little critical thinking, this recruitment is possible without a guide. Still, this is a significantly more involved recruitment process than any other unit in the game. Coupled with this chapter being locked behind the completion of several bad Gaiden chapters, Corel feels like a tucked away secret the game itself didn't want you to know about. Which feels fitting for Corel, a once renowned swordsman enjoying his retirement in peace. Corel is known as the Sword Saint. So befitting that name, he's recruited as a pre-promoted level 19 swordmaster with the powerful Wudao sword. Right out of the box, Corel is a decent unit that can fit right into your army. And why shouldn't he? He was apparently a legendary swordsman, right? But I don't want to overrate him. Many will point out that Corel's joining stats usually won't surpass a trained Rucker, who anyone who's played Binding Blade knows is an indispensable piece in their army. There's even a chance that his own niece, Fear, could be statistically better than Corel. So he's pretty strong, but probably won't be your strongest unit. Hell, he'd probably even agree with his critics in that regard. But hold on, I want to draw your attention back to Corel's level. Corel is a promoted class at level 19. For those who haven't played Fire Emblem, in a majority of the games, including this one, level 20 is the maximum level a unit can reach in a class. And unlike some future games in the series, the Binding Blade doesn't have any sort of reclass feature. So once Corel gains a level, he'll have reached his maximum level, meaning that without the help of precious stat boosting items, his starting stats aren't going to look much different from his final stats. 
What makes things worse is level ups in Fire Emblem can be really swingy. Each stat has a percent chance to be increased. This is known as a character's growth rates. It's far from uncommon for a unit to level up and only receive one point of HP as a result just because of how the RNG worked. So not only can Corel only level up one time, but his stat increases are at the mercy of whatever his growth rates are. With all of that said, Corel may only be able to level up once, but his one level might just be the greatest level up in the history of Fire Emblem. These are Corel's growth rates. No, this isn't a lie. Those are actually it. Corel sports the highest growth rates in the entire series. Because of these growth rates, anytime you use Corel, you'll be getting a guaranteed magnificent level up. Now, I'm well aware that this one level up doesn't move the needle all that much in his standing against a player's trained Rucker or Fear, but that's not really the point I'm trying to make. I don't like Corel as a unit because he's the best Swordmaster in the game. I like him because the idea of making a unit that can only level up one time but make it the most explosive, fantastic level in the entire series is so fascinating to me. And I think it also ties back in thematically with Corel as a character. Corel was known as the Sword Saint, if you'll recall. There's this built up mythos around the guy that's meant to suggest that a long time ago he was one of the greatest swordsmen to ever walk the plains. Perhaps his stats don't reflect that mythos, but remember, that moniker was given to him a long time ago. He apparently hadn't used the sword in a long time. His stats not being better than Rutger doesn't suggest that he's weak. To me, it suggests that he's rusty. Whereas his extremely high level and pre-promoted class suggests that there is, at the very least, some truth to the stories of the Sword Saint. Finally, there's that level up. That incredibly huge level up is like a vindication to the player. The legend was true. Considering he's a level 19 Swordmaster, whatever these level ups are supposed to represent in the world of the game, it's easy to believe that these magnificent boosts in strength happened often when Corel was in his prime. Much like how we only get stories and secondhand accounts of Corel's exploits in years prior, this one level up is merely a glimpse into the past of the Sword Saint. To wrap things up, I'd like to briefly discuss Corel's supports. These optional conversations are accessible by having two specific units stand close to each other for a time. Being a character that joins so late into the plot without any significance to the main storyline means that these support conversations are the largest source of characterization for Corel. The conversations are, for the most part, very good. They paint Corel as this calm, wise teacher, like when he speaks to Fear or Rucker, but also as someone who wants to atone for his past mistakes, like with Noah or Bartre. Personally, the archetype of the once brash, now wise master of his own craft is a favorite of mine, so I can understand if maybe you think I'm a little biased here. But I want to make it clear that it isn't specifically because of these supports that I like Corel so much. The support conversations are merely the cherry on top. It's the way Intelligent Systems integrated his mythos into the game mechanics itself that endeared me so much to the character. I would be wrong to put too much stake on the support conversations anyway, much like how his late arrival and little relevance to the main plot or why his characterization needs to rely on the supports to begin with, it's those two aspects that also doom these supports to never being seen by players. The support system in the GBA Fire Emblem games is notorious for taking a ridiculous amount of time to access, only appearing using deliberate and very drawn out tactics to see them. It's just not a good system, but I digress. I'm sure at this point some of you are wondering why I didn't discuss anything established about Corel in the follow-up prequel to Fire Emblem the Binding Blade, Fire Emblem Blazing Blade, or simply Fire Emblem in the West. Being a prequel that takes place 20 years prior to the Binding Blade, it sheds some light on Corel's past since he's featured in that game as well. The short answer is that I've actually never played Blazing Blade, which I suppose gives me a somewhat unique perspective on Corel as a character when compared to most English Fire Emblem fans. I can probably say that if I had played Blazing Blade before Binding Blade, then maybe I wouldn't think so highly of Corel then. Not to imply that his characterization in Blazing Blade ruins his Binding Blade portrayal or anything, 
But personally, I prefer the air of mystery Carell's backstory has in The Binding Blade, instead of the more definitive portrayal given to his past scene in Blazing Blade. I just find the former more interesting from a storytelling perspective. When I was playing through The Binding Blade, the way Carell was almost hidden away from the player fascinated me from the outset. Learning that he was this once fabled wandering swordsman endeared me to him even more, and finally the integration of the gameplay into his backstory ended up cementing him as one of my favorite characters in Fire Emblem. It's frankly surprising to me that Intelligent Systems hasn't ever revisited the idea of a character with one explosive level since. But I suppose that simply makes Corel all the more unique. So shine on, Sword Saint. Thanks for lending us your blade one last time, and may you live the rest of your days in peace.